And Lisa Raid is with me now. Uh, Lisa Raid, good to see you again. Great to be here, Peter. Thanks for stopping Welcome by. Welcome to Toronto. Uh, yeah. We're in Toronto a lot, and <laughs> here we are. Mississauga. <laughs> Mississauga. Big, big Toronto. Yeah. Uh, how are you feeling? I feel great. A lot of energy, really excited, lots of people, seeing a lot of old friends. People are really excited for this convention, and I'm one of them. What, uh, what are the last few hours uh, in the race like for your campaign? I mean, most of the ballots yeah. are in. There'll still be some people who can vote uh, here, or in, I think it's a half a dozen ridings, or sorry, a dozen ridings across the country yeah. where they're doing voting sort of get togethers tomorrow. But for all account, you know, intents and purposes, people have voted. Uh, yeah. So what's happening with you now in terms of? Uh, and you're right. What's been what's been occupying your campaign the last week or so? For the last week, well, you you start big, which is trying to get all the ballots in that are coming in by mail, and then you try to funnel them into the areas where um, either people who haven't yet filled out their ballot, trying to make sure that they got it in at the very last minute. We've been watching the opening of the ballots that are happening here in Toronto, right. in Vaughan, actually. And the third part is um, there's actually a voting booth in my riding of Milton tomorrow. So we're going to make sure that anybody in the outlying areas know that they can go into certain polling booths. I think Michael Chong has one, right. Aaron O'Toole has one. So we're going to push those guys there. And I think there's there's a, another 10,000 votes or so in those places. The markers so far that we have, and it's mm -hmm. a, it's a it's a tricky campaign to try and sort of uh, figure out who's where uh, between some kind of polling and the, the way the system is with a preferential ballot and points awarded uh, for the support you get in different ridings across the country. But what we do have suggests yeah. you're sort of in the middle of the pack uh, yeah. when, it, when it comes to ballot number one. Um, what do you think that suggests about your message during the campaign and what you were offering Conservative Party members? Well, I think my message was well taken. Um, I did very well in all the debates. I got lots of comments about how well spoken I am, how professional I am. I have the most experience of anybody up there. Uh, let's wait and see how the votes come I was in. Say, how do you break. think middle of the pack is okay? Ballot number one. Yeah, I, I think it is. And I then where's the path to victory for Lisa right after path that? Path to victory for me is is finding those first time voters who aren't necessarily being reached by the people who are calling around for polling. There's a lot of people who don't necessarily donate to campaigns, and in the beginning, a lot of the polling came from donation lists, and I think a lot of pollsters are running off of that as well. And we'll see how it breaks down in the smaller ridings. I never made any bones about the fact that I have a strong maritime presence. And I spend a lot of time in the Maritimes, and I've got really good people helping me on campaign out there. And I'm going to continue to go into the very last minute. So our campaign, although it winds down in a little bit of a way, you kind of get prepared for this weekend, and it's more of a celebration. You're still working to the very last minute. Do you have any concerns about, so if, if, uh, if somebody else wins, uh, is there anybody on that list of, of potential leaders you can't work with? Well, um, spoiler alert, what I'm going to say tonight is no matter who wins, I'm going to fully support that leader. And I would expect any other mm -hmm. candidate to say exactly the same thing if I were to be lucky enough to be chosen by the membership to be the leader. But they've got me and they're back for sure. Okay. What, what, what's the most important, uh, what's job one for a new leader, I guess, starting, mm -hmm. you know, 8 o'clock Saturday night? 8 o'clock Saturday. It's exactly when it starts. Yeah. So that's good to know. Uh, job one is going to be unifying the membership that's here unifying the MPs that are here, bringing them all together, and any good person... Is that a big job, do you think? Has this been a divisive race? It's been a... Mm. There's been a clash of some ideas, and some of them fairly pointed. Uh, I wouldn't say divisive. What I would say is this, is that perhaps there's a little bit of light and space between colleagues that wasn't there before the leadership. And nothing wrong with it. It's just, as people picked who they were going to support in the leadership, they tended to stay within that group of friends. Right. They didn't really have a crossover. It's time to come back. But you know what needs to happen? The leader has to show the path for the next 10 days, the next 15 days. And I'm ready to do that right away at 8 o'clock tonight. What do you, so, uh, you know, people suggest the front runner. The information suggests the front runner is Max Bernie. Um, yeah. If he wins, you've said already, you'll support whoever the yeah, new leader is. Yeah, I will. Uh, what about some of his policies? No, I will Federal not. Federal government out of the And I will fight him tooth and nail on the floor of our policy convention because our policy is made at the grassroots level and he has to sell it to all the members in that policy convention. And I don't agree with supply management. And I don't with agree that rid everything. Of it. Yeah, and yeah. I don't agree with that everything is well, corporate that, welfare. So, some, like I say, some of these have, have been policies that have stepped out of what the party is comfortable with and what right. is party policy. So, you get into a caucus meeting with Maxime Bernier, how does that go when he's saying, uh, we're, I'm going to. I'm going to push to get rid of supply management. Well, and what he, he says, looks across the room and people going, no. No, I think what he says is, let's put a process in place to bet, bring forth the best campaign platform we can. Here are my ideas. Here's what I got elected on. 
And I would be there to say, but we have to go to the grassroots and let's have that convention as soon as possible in 2018. And I think it's already been set. We're mm. going to Halifax, yeah, Halifax next year. And I'll be there. And what I don't agree with, I will fight on the floor, just like I disagreed with on the platform here. All right. Lisa Raitt, uh, good to speak with you. Thanks for stopping by. Always and, a pleasure. Uh, good luck this weekend. Thank you. All right. Great to see you again. Thank you too.